I don't meditate as a formal practice. I sit in my hot tub. That sounds like meditation. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and I love to garden. Oh, that's And that is form. my form of meditation, too. Do you garden every day? Or I, obviously have to I work. try. Yeah, you try. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the flowers control you. They don't, you don't control them. You look at them and it's like, oh, that needs to be watered. That needs to be clipped. Got to move this around. You're a slave to them, <laughs> right? So... It's nice because, you know, you don't have to be, it's nice to be doing kind of like manual labor to them. It doesn't take a lot of intellectual thinking. It just means moving stuff around. And that's a form of meditation because you're not working with the mind in a real intense way, but you're just letting go and getting your hands dirty. But are you seeing an opportunity with your work to be able to calm people's minds and use it in places where the work is so profound in its movement, you could actually settle an anxious mind or settle a problematic mind. Are you seeing opportunities in the future that your work could be used in places to help quiet? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole movement now where people are looking at, um, you know, the idea that we need to, you know, reduce our stress. So even in like corporate environments, there's like meditation or nook naps. And I think this imagery can really help that. There's even, a, a, I read an article recently how zoning out is a good thing. I used to get yelled at that for, 
I'm all gonna, the time. I in, think that really school. says something, though. Do you think that corporations that are so busy today and people are so strapped to those computers perhaps will use your work in quiet rooms? Yeah. And use it on walls well, because and moving therapy? It, it, it inspires creativity, which is what corporations want. So, for example, when you zone out, it gives the brain a chance to kind of like reboot a little bit, um, break the pattern of thinking you're always in. Multitasking is not a good thing they've discovered. Um, so if you want to get more productivity from people, you need to kind of like refresh the brain. And nature is a great way of refreshing it. Is there, in your work, do you see a difference between watching the butterflies or the bees or the bats? Because I've seen your bat work and your butterflies versus the flowers. Is there a difference? Yeah, is there a different, is there a different <clears throat> possible response? Do you think there's a different level of less anxiety? Um, I think it's all inspiring, but it's something I really want to explore. Yeah, I want to do MRI studies yeah. where I could show different biomes of nature. Like what does a desert do to you versus like a mountain or an ocean and or animal behavior versus flower behavior. We have, we, we, we've barely scratched the surface. I mean, what people have studied, they're like color, you know, vibrations of color, how that affects, you know, architectural design, right, fashion cars, you know, but we haven't really figured out like what it does to the mind, body, heart connection. So that is, you know, unexplored territory. It's something I, I am actually going to do with this project called Gratitude Revealed. We're going to do like 15 webisodes and we're going to measure the results of people watching it online from clinical studies, including medical study. Wow. This is something we have to watch as this goes along. Because I think these therapies are really interesting. Yeah. Because it takes us away from the hard computers and stops our mind. Right. I have one last question. Yeah. That you once said, I love your quotes. I did a lot mm. of research on the many things that you've said along with your beautiful art. I think we need to do some deep soul searching about what is important in our lives and renew our spirit and spiritual thinking, whether it's through faith-based religion or just loving nature, or helping your fellow man. You have been such a force, in, in my opinion, humble opinion, mm. of course. What's next? That's a really good question. Um, I feel like I'm bringing all these modalities together that I've been working on. Um, filmmaking, a, maybe a therapeutic type chair, that would have audio, video, wow. aromatherapy, vibration. We I want think, that chair. Yeah, we want that chair. I mean, in I my think office. that. I mean, <laughs> the movie theater in my mind always had the potential to be a, a temple, mm -hmm. a spiritual temple. The IMAX screen could be that, you know, a domed environment, and and so people want to get together in, in a tribal way. Oprah, you know, she after she interviewed me on Super Soul Sunday, uses my imagery in her show. And I saw it at the Verizon Center and in a giant stadium, 25,000 screaming women, and it was a spiritual experience. And, and, I, and I believe that we, you know, we haven't really figured out how to really take advantage of that. You know, rock concerts, they're okay. <laughs> the music's loud, but you can't dance. I mean, what, what about Woodstock? Remember that? What about you know, Unfortunately, people, I do. Well, yeah, well, I mean, like, why, why can't people gather, move their bodies to visuals and music, create connection? So are you working on a new film? You know, you've done yeah. so many films yeah. and so um, many amazing things. Fantastic Fungi is one film I'm working on, on mushrooms. People go, why are you doing a film about mushrooms? Or about mushrooms, not on mushrooms. And um, <laughs> um, it's because... It could be the really the beginning of life. You know, we've got a great gardener over here who really understands it, but instead of it being the decomposition, it could be composition. It could be the great assembler of nature. And we're finally now understanding how the soil is by far the most important living ingredient on the planet. Without soil, no plants, no plants, no animals, no life. And it also could be the only solution for climate change because if we can you know, 
How are we going to suck the carbon out of the atmosphere that we've already put up there, forgetting about what we're going to do in the future? If we stop tomorrow burning fossil fuel, it doesn't negate the 100 years of carbon we've put into the atmosphere. Well, the only way to get carbon out of the atmosphere is nature's way. You know, plants take in carbon, right? CO2 releases oxygen, carbon goes back into the soil. So mushrooms and their root structure, which is called mycelium, the largest organism on the planet, can heal you, it can feed you, can shift your consciousness. So this is like the forefront of new technologies dealing back to nature. Well, your daughter's studying I mushrooms, know, right? That's really she great. Is. No, it is, is because, I mean, finally now we have tools like scanning electron microscopes where we can look you know, in, into that microscopic world and realize, oh my God, it's alive. There's millions of bacteria, enzymes, and mycelium is like the internet under the ground that moves, you know, um, chemicals, ingredients from one plant to another, and it's it's conscious. So um, to me, that's a big story. That's a great story. Yeah, and that's what I'm working on, and I'm expanding my gratitude video. Are we can show we'll the gratitude right video. Now. Okay, great. We're going to stop so, for a moment, and we're going to do that and come back okay, to that. Okay. Well, I'm, and I'm expanding that into a feature based on a grant I got from the Templeton Foundation. Wow. I'm going a to full length, like a long. Yeah, I'm going to explore everything that adds up to gratitude, generosity, curiosity, wonder, awe, courage, um, and build that all into one big feature film. This particular film that you're going to see now is our last film for tonight. I mean, we're closing with it purposely because it is goosebumps, seriously. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope, you know, these conversations that we have here at the Golden Door are really special. I always still get yeah. innocent like a child every time I get to talk about all these things. It makes my mind just race with asking more questions. Yeah. And I can sit here forever, but unfortunately I know our guests cannot. But we're going to show gratitude, and then we're going to let you ask some questions if you'd like to, and answers. And then we'll, we'll um, say goodnight to our incredible speaker. I'm so glad you could be here with us tonight. Oh, it's an honor. I love what you do here at the Golden Door. It's the exact same, you know, love, vibration that I'm trying to share with my film, but to a maybe a broader audience. So we're both doing it. What you do here inspires people to go back home and carry that message of living in harmony with the planet. And, and that's what we're all trying to do.